be good. Uh, no, he makes up for it in the hallway, but it's been a long time. Damn. Number 15, Will Cook. Will is a two-year varsity member and is joined by his parents, Nikki and Peter Cook. Will was also a member of the soccer and water polo teams. He'll be taking a gap year to travel and work and then will be attending James Madison University. Number five, five. Nolan, Nolan Philly. Philly. Nolan is a two-year varsity player, and he is joined by his father, Ron, and mom, Leah. Nolan is headed south to play college lacrosse at Mercer University and study business. Congratulations, Nolan. Number nine, Aiden McInerney. Aiden is a two-year member of the varsity team and is joined by parents Joe and Ellen, his brothers Finn and Liam, and his grandmother, as well as his brother Danny and sister-in-law Jess. Aiden will be attending Clemson University, where he plans on studying business. He was also a member of the water polo team here at Spalding. Number three, Logan Meehan. Logan is a three-year varsity member of the lacrosse team and a four-year varsity water polo player. He's accompanied by his dad, Justin, mom, Beth, his grandfather, Herb, and his grandmother, Elaine. 
Logan will be attending Towson University and playing lacrosse while also studying business. Number 20, Ben Ruiz. Ben is a three-year varsity member and two-time captain. He will continue his lacrosse career at the United States Naval Academy Prep School before heading to Annapolis to play lacrosse. He's joined by his parents, Coleman and Bridget, and his brother, Ollie. Number 32, Cameron Wade. Cam is a two-year member of the varsity. He will be attending Anne Arundel Community College Trade School next year. He's joined by his grandfather, Calvin, grandmother, Sharon, and his dad, Patrick. Congratulations, Cameron. Number seven, P.J. Pocnus. P.J. is a two-year varsity lacrosse player and member of the MIA championship football team. He will continue his football career at RPI. For his senior season, P.J. has been selected by his teammates to wear the number seven jersey to honor Andy Ezer, a former football and lacrosse star at Spalding. The number seven is awarded to the player who best represents Andy and what a true Spalding lacrosse player should be on and off the field. PJ is accompanied by his mom, Melanie, dad, Jason, and sister, Lila. PJ has worn the number seven jersey with pride and we thank him for adding to this legacy. Again, we would like to take this time to thank our seniors. Big thank you to our program and their families. The program truly is moving forward and will be better. Your impact on this program will never be forgotten. We do appreciate everything you have done for Archbishop Spaulding, not only on the cross field, but in the classroom and the school community. Congratulations and thank you.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. <laughs> I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and it transitions directly onto the field where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and it transitions directly onto the field where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. <laughs> I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and it transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. <laughs> I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and it transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. <laughs> I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It's always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It's always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You will become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
as you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant. I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and then transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding is athletically strong and vibrant. I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and then transitions directly onto the field where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding is athletically strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger.
As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance, and if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing, MIAA encourages and promotes sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. Offensive language, including profanity, racial or ethnic slurs, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, event staff, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated. We ask you to please stand and gentlemen, remove your cap for the playing of our national anthem. From Whittles Field, this is Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. Today, the Cavaliers wrap up the 2023 season as they play host to the Gales of Mount St. Joe. 
Glenn Clark alongside Andrew Scally. Sean Hadley is currently sitting on 97, screaming at a car in front of him to get moving already. Andrew, it is senior day. Of course, it has been a disappointing season, wins and losses-wise for the Cavaliers. But important, they want to send the seniors out with a big win today. Yeah, definitely, Glenn. Uh, and welcome back. It feels like we haven't been up here in a while, so good to see you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, any senior day, regardless of sport, is a, is a big day for the players, for their families. Um, and, they, and you're right, to you know, cap off this season with a win would be a great way to send these guys off. Gales will have the ball first. They're moving right to left on your Internet dial, but they might not have it for very long. It's a nice shoulder shove, but the ball doesn't go out as Ruiz fell on top of it. He had the right idea there, Andrew. Unfortunately, got the wrong result, but it won't matter as Robbie Hopper is going to come away with the ground ball. Hopper pushing. He had an idea, moves it. Oh, that was the right decision. It just could not quite connect. Sloppy start here to this game. Seems like it's been a yeah, ball's been minute on the and a half ground ball battle. Most of the game intercepted, and so it stays with the Cavaliers. Bobby Coman's getting the start today. Coman's come on. He's been a big part of the man-up unit. The sophomore attacker. Spalding will get things settled and will go on the attack for the first time today. Cavaliers 5-12, and 2-7 and seven in conference play. They've been eliminated from postseason contention. Trying to shake a three-game losing streak. Again, end on a high note this season. Last time out, a 17-9 loss at St. Mary's last Thursday, last time they were at home. Heartbreaking 9-8 setback against Calvert Hall last Tuesday. Yeah, Glenn, I'm curious to see how they come out today. Like you said, coming off a three-game losing streak. Senior day always has a little bit of a weird... There we go. Nice fake. And then is there going to be a flag for that? I don't see one out, but give Diego Garza a big goal. Start the game. Spalding goes in front 1-0. We're going to honor the seniors throughout the course of the day. Guys like Nolan Philly. Part of this group, Philly, of course. You saw a big fan of the Water Boy. What the Water Boy? What year did the Water Boy come out? There's no chance Nolan Philly was alive when the Water Boy was out. 1 0, Spalding in front. Quick faceoff win, however, going the other way and trying to take it all the way home, but having it trail checked Another out trail of check. his stick. That we're, was. We're giving that to Hopper? Was that, did Hopper get a I stick mean, on it, that? It feels like they all should it's, belong to Hopper. That's so the let's safe just, bet right yeah, there. Yeah, let's just give it to him anyway, no matter what. Yeah, coming into the game with 30 calls turnovers. That goal for Garza, his 16th of the season and his 23rd point as Spalding strikes first. But yeah, Glenn, going back to what I was saying earlier, I, these senior games typically have a weird feel to them. The players are out early because they have to go back in the locker room to then you know, have the senior ceremony. So um, always have a chance to come out flat, but that first offensive possession you know, looked pretty good for the Cavs. Gordon Bennett throws it behind to Garza. Garza now swings it back up top. And Jack Newell will operate. Newell loses his footing, able to get back up. Fakes the flip to Garza, keeps it moving. Opportunity in front, but that side netting for McInerney. And speak about those seniors. Aiden McInerney getting the start today, his final game as a Cavalier. Trying to reward him in the early going. He's not able to cash in, but the Cavaliers get it back. Yeah, nifty little move right there. Came around the cage, had the def defender hung up on the back of the cage and went backhand, unfortunately, just, you know, one step short of, of glory. Hey, Mollet, he's going to be around for a little while. Just a freshman. Seen so much good from Mollet this season. He's battled some injuries. Mollet trying to get free, feeds it in front, and that one will be saved as Garza is denied. Nice save from Austin Slade, the sophomore goalie. Gale's looking to get their first settled possession of the day. And they'll convert as Corey Myers brings it over. Myers lines it up, but that one's taken. Cena all the way and handled by Newman. Quickly the other way, thinking about it and delivering Hopper. It's saved, but picked up. Rebound in front, and Ben Duffy puts it home to make it 2 0. Duffy's seventh of the season, his 11th point for the junior, future Vermont Catamount. 
Just cleaning up the trash there, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, Robbie Hopper, you know, looking for, for some glory there, some step-down pay dirt, but, you know, didn't make it through. Defender, bold move getting in front of that one. Um, but I'll, I'll give I'll give Robbie the uh, the hockey assist on that sure, one. Sure, right? Deserved. I imagine that Mount St. Joe coach Tyler Reed is not thrilled with the decision from Corey Myers on a day where they have not been able to get possession at all to just run in and shoot that transition and maybe not get a possession. Garrett Conley wins the faceoff for Mount St. Joe. He's had the advantage early on. Future Mount St. Mary's Mountaineer. Love to see it. Figured that one would be one that you wouldn't. It's got to be a little bit awkward, right? Like, you know, today you can't necessarily be happy for him, but it is. It a is good, deep you, down. I'm not going to say it. Right. You know, I'll feel it. You know, happy for Coach Gravani and getting a good one there uh, coming off of a tough loss in the playoffs there for, for Mount St. Mary's. Uh, some, Wait, Glenn, what's awkward? Some, 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 what, what's awkward is we're just letting fans up in the booth now. We're just letting random people run up and grab a Boys, hit. what did I miss? You missed a great 2-0 start. Maybe you should stay away. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I know. Don't, actually, if don't jinx it. this goes the other way, I'm leaving. Sean Atley has joined us here in the booth. Nice of him to uh, make an appearance. You know, the game started at 5 today. Did you get the memo? Or? Oh, it's weird. Yeah. Full-time attorney, part-time commentary hack. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people would say full-time attorney hack, too. But. <laughs> No, They're in good. jail. They can't, they can't testify. That's great that. <laughs> Good to have you back. Good start for the Cavaliers getting in free. And sort of just sort of releasing it backwards was Duffy as he was falling down. Duffy already has a goal today. Nice save. That was not going to roll out, so it ultimately forced McInerney to pick it up. McInerney starting on senior day. Possession continues for the Cavaliers. Duffy, defended by Addison. Makes his move. Nice Sends it inside. inside. Hopeness turns around and hammers it home. A senior day goal for P.J. Pokeness, his 26th of the year. Makes it 3-0 Cavaliers here with 6.22 to play in the first quarter. It's exactly how they draw it up, obviously. Can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, that's uh, that's Pokenus's sweet spot right there. Like you said, shooting forty percent, good numbers for being five yards away from the cage. So they found him. He turned. He buried it. We've seen that quite a few times this season. And kind of getting an answer to your question, Andrew, about how they're going to respond. Starting off the emotions of senior day and having to go back to the locker room and everything. Yeah, they're they're starting off just fine so far today. Yeah, they're playing well, and I, I think, honestly, Mount St. Joe's coaches might be scratching their heads a little bit. That we've, we're halfway through this first quarter, and it seems like they haven't, they haven't had, had a, a full, possession yet. Yeah, despite winning some face-offs. So uh, a couple uncaused, you know, unforced turnovers, a couple caused turnovers, uh, you know, great saves on the fast break. So we'll see how they respond here, but you're right. I'm happy with how Spalding came out of the, out of the gates here and uh, still on the man up. Penalty was called on Danny McGuire. The senior long stick midfielder. So extra man opportunity on top of everything here for the Cavaliers as they try to add to what is already a 3-0 advantage. I did not, I got to be honest with you, I did not see what the call was for. I think it was a high hit and it okay. must, they scored, right? So it was a, a non-releasable. So there you go. And allows the Cavaliers to get their first man-up opportunity of the game. Comins has been a big part of the man-up all year. Surveys, sends it out to Garza wow. Loda high with some heat. Second of the game, 17th of the season for Diego Garza. It's 4 nothing Spalding. All right, Sean, we'll let you stick around. You didn't ruin everything. <laughs> we'll allow you to hang out for the rest of the game. But if it starts going south, you're out of here. Oh, I'll, I'll jump out this window. We're good. Appreciate that. Make that sacrifice. Sacrifice one for the team. Good movement. Got a free shooter. Impressive shot from Diego Garza. And you've seen Diego Garza can shoot, man. He can whip the ball in. Yeah, and I think the most impressive thing about him is his ability to kind of change his plane and, and you know, drop his hands, bring it high, keep it high, bring it low. He's, he keeps the goalie guessing, and, you know, it shows in his, his stat line. Sean, we need an opinion on this. The face-off specialist from Mount St. Joe. Offsides, if they call it. 
Garrett Conley is headed to Mount St. Mary's. So is Andrew allowed to enjoy his success today or not? Well, Andrew knows better than that. <laughs> we, we wait till this game's over, and then Andrew can enjoy right, whatever right. success he wants to. <laughs> Appreciate you ruling on that. That's why we call him. You say you're a, we needed your law experience. Of course. In order to get a My definitive. Analytical skills. First settled possession of the day oh, for nice the Gales. Stick by Robbie but Robbie Hopper. Hopper ends it quite quickly. Gets it back for the Cavaliers. And certainly the brightest spot of the season for Spalding has been the play of Robbie Hopper. I mean, Robbie Hopper is going to be a top recruit in the country here coming up. No doubt about that. Yeah, I don't know if we have the statis out. statisticians digging it up right now, but I'd be curious to know what the season record is for calls turnovers. I, he's got to be sniffing it. I mean, at, at 32, you know, with the two in this game already, he's been playing very, very well at a really high level. You know what other? What else jumped out at me? How many times does someone besides your face-off specialist lead your team in ground balls? Yeah, very true. How many times do you see that at any level of this sport? But also the number of cause turnovers that Robbie Hopper has, I mean, especially at this level and the way the game has changed, where it's pretty difficult to get the ball out of somebody's stick. Yeah. So for Robbie Hopper to be able to, to garner those many cause turnovers is, is quite, re quite remarkable. Mount St. Joe have won too many guys out there. Owen Cooper will serve the offsides penalty. So a second man up for the Cavaliers early on in this one. They, of course, converted the first with Diego Garza. But look to make it two for two. As Spalding is rolling here on senior day. Inside, and they will convert this one as well. Just the last two man up possessions, I think there were a total of three passes yep. and two goals. So I, I think Coach Ford and Coach Cottle are, are pretty happy over on the sideline. Maybe not necessarily how they drew it up. That one had a little bit more structure to it, but they're just moving quickly and moving without the ball and um, maybe catching Mount St. Joe sleeping. But either way, they'll take advantage of it. And I don't want to discount Spalding's man-up offense, but at the same time, it looks it looked to me like Mount St. Joe was ball-watching. Yes. Yep. Um, and, flat -footed. And, yeah, and have some of the last, the last possession or so. So... You know, it, when you get that movement and people are ball watching, you're going to get those opportunities. Newell with his first of the game, 21st of the season, and makes it 5-0 Spalding here with a 4-10 to play in the first quarter. Timeout taken by Mount St. Joe as they just desperately have to regroup. Gales 8-9 and nine on the season, 1-8 and eight in conference play, coming off an 18-7 loss against Boys Latin on a Friday. Their last win was a 9-8 victory against John Carroll back on April 28th, and it's their only win in their last nine games, all of which have been in conference play. They are limping to the finish line. The Cavaliers taking advantage of that so far. And, yeah, some, okay, there we go. Robbie Hopper, for some reason, was standing on the circle like he was playing women's lacrosse there for a second. But he comes over, takes the spot on the wing. And it has been dominance at the faceoff dot for Conley so far in Mount St. Mary's, which is, to your point, Andrew, has got to be even more frustrating that they've had all these possessions, they've won all these faceoffs, and they haven't been able to do anything at all with it so far. Yeah, I've never been inside the mind of a faceoff guy, but, you know, it's, i got to imagine it's pretty demoralizing doing your job time in, time out and not seeing it result in, in goals on the scoreboard. But um, nonetheless, he's got to keep playing and keep doing his job. So he's, he's looked sharp. And that's honestly something, you know, Spalding has battled with the last several games and, and something that nice shot and finish that's, there. That's wow. pretty nifty from Corey Myers. The senior may be saying, ah, what the heck, we're down 5-0, and it's the last game of the season. Let me throw something at him, a little razzle Break dazzle. out all the tricks. I don't think that was a necessary behind the back, but when it works... Do it anyway, right? <laughs> He'll take it. But, yeah, yeah, going back to it, I think, you know, with Ryan Criswell going down, you know, several games ago with, with the wrist injury, you kind of saw Spalding struggle a little bit, gaining possession. And, and, obviously, we've talked about all season. You give more possessions to the other team, they're going to capitalize at this level. And Gordon Griffith has tried to step up. That came in today really struggling, just 23.6% on the season. And he's going to get that one as this time Conley just kind of forgot the ball. Cavaliers work it backwards. We'll need to clear it. 
And they'll get that done. Plenty of time as they set up on the attack, leading 5-1. Good clear by Ben Ruiz. Shout out to his grandmother, Dorothy, again tuning in from Colorado. Faithful listener all season long. Is she a fan, though, I guess is the question. Or does she think that maybe she's a fan of Andrew? I right. think, no, well, I was going to say, I think she's learned, I, she's learned a lot from, from Mr. Hatley over here as far as the defense goes and, you know, watching Ben at, you know, play at this level. Um, so you've done a great job, Sean. Great job to Ben all season. Honoring Ben here as a senior today is, you know, a special moment for everybody. It's a nice save. Austin Slade hanging in there, making a tough save. Two and a half to play here in this first quarter. Mount St. Joe. Slade's going to really take this one all the way down. He's not. Uh, I was wondering if he was thinking about it. I was looking about, for the give yeah. and go. I right? Was, I was like, <laughs> why not, right? Well, hats off to Spalding's ride, really forcing the goalie to carry it over the, the midline. It's just unfortunately the attackman was able to slip away from Logan Meehan, catch that ball. Meehan, another one of the seniors, honored before today's game. And again, while they won't be winning a championship this season, they have certainly played a lot of meaningful lacrosse during the course of their careers here at Spalding. It's turned aside. It was a funky hop. 148 remaining in the quarter. Still 33 seconds on the possession clock. Like they're in a zone right now. Good relentless defense from Dylan Newell. That's a difficult angle. Very unlikely to be able to convert a shot like that from there. And easily taken by Newman as he denies Maddox Walton. Walton, the leading scorer for the Scales team. He's headed to play at Florida Southern. Oh, Jamison Kaufman just shaking him off. No call there. I don't. It could have been an offsides. Yeah. It could have been a hold. It could have been a slash. <laughs> Letting him play. But we've seen that physicality from James yeah, he's all utter, season. And he's I mean, utterly not, unfazed by not it. Not afraid to lower his shoulder. Right. Okay, challenge me. Go for it. I mean, if we, I, what was it? The what game did we see him come up? With almost the identical play. Lower his head. Run over somebody, and he got the penalty called. Lower his shoulder. Shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Hopefully the refs aren't listening to us say lower his head. Well, they, they, <laughs> they, they saw him lower his head. Inside. Not on target off the stick of P.J. Pokeness. Feed from Mollett. Still 27 on the possession clock, but just under 30 seconds on the game clock, so about three-second difference right now. Late in the first quarter, Duffy sends it behind. It's fed up top Good and ball delivered. Movement. McInerney on senior day. First of the game, a third of the season for the senior makes it 6-1 Cavaliers with 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. I mean, Andrew, that's textbook. Dodge, two passes, wide open shot. Yep. You're exactly right. Great look. And the, and the key to that was the quick release. So as soon as the ball hit it, you know, he was stepping down in the shot. He, he found the space, had his hands ready to shoot, pull the trigger, and, and the goalie, you know, he's making that turn to see the ball, right? And by that point, it's already by him. So great execution all around. 20 and a half seconds remaining. So time here. We got a new face on the wing, Grayson Dunn. Grayson Dunn, sophomore. Face-off violation first of the first half for the Cavaliers. They got to go quickly. Well, they are wasting time right now. Finally get going, and they'll just throw it away. 3.6 seconds left. That is uh, not, I'm sure, what they had in mind for a final 20 seconds of the quarter. The chuck downfield, that'll be how the quarter comes to a close. Impressive quarter for the Cavaliers. They're in front, 6-1 after one. You're watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, 
creativity. And does. Guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Spalding in front, 6-1 after one. Glenn Clark, Andrew Scally, Sean Hatley, the late arriving Sean Hatley, but he paid his fine. We're okay with it's that. fashionably late. <laughs> You know what? And fashionable, actually. Well, no Both one's, of you I mean, guys. I didn't get the memo. I got to figure out where I Andrew gets his shirt. Get the memo about this kid's this baby gap all point. <laughs> baby gap, actually. Uh, I don't think you could ask for much more in that first quarter. Pretty impressive 12 minutes from the Cavaliers to start things off, Sean. No, was, I mean I thought they were playing good defense. They were getting out of their man. I mean, Saint. They were forcing Mount St. Joe to take some pretty, pretty tough shots, um, especially if you want those to go. But and. You know, Andrew, from an offensive perspective, it looks like Spalding was moving the ball well. Yeah, they're definitely playing with some confidence. You see that first one go early and, you know, kind of build momentum from there, but getting a lot of different people involved and, and sharing it. I think, you know, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would venture to say, you know, five if not six of the goals are, are coming assisted, which, you know, as an offensive-minded, you know, commentator, I, that you love to see it. Griffith, Griffith trying to show a little more muscle that time on the face-off. It didn't result in a face-off win, but I appreciated that he was trying to Use a little bit more force to get the ball. It's still and you know what word? Knock, knock on wood. But what mm -hmm. word we haven't been using is turnover. When, so yeah, when, when looking you know, at ball, I, I actually pass. think that it's not okay that you said that out loud. Taboo. I, Taboo. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think maybe you try to take that. I just that thought we started off the year saying turnover forty-five times a game, and yeah. now we're you know I think we haven't said it once. Gales with the ball. Alex Clyde. Middle of the field, sends it down to the near side. Walton sends it back up top. Now Craney back behind the X where Clyde has slipped back. Interesting that, I'm sorry, that's actually number 40, Owen Cooper from High Point, or that future High Point Panther. Andrew, psychologically, what goes on in your mind when you're going against a long pole like someone like Robbie Hopper? who you know is very capable of taking the ball away. Yeah, it's definitely on the scouting report, so you know he can play. And it, for me, it, it's not getting away from what you've done, you know, your entire season, your entire career, right? So just going hard to the cage and protecting the stick. I think you got to make it decisions like a split second faster. Um, but if you're playing at a high level and you're, and you're practicing against talent like that, which, you know, Mount St. Joe definitely has, you know, players on their roster that have talent, maybe not up to, you know, Robbie Hopper, you know, level, but every week they're playing the McDonald's, the St. Mary's, the Gilm, all these MIAA schools, they all have top talent that, um, you know, you practice with, against, and for. Um, so, yeah, you're just trying to make that decision as, as fast as possible. I'm either passing it, I'm dodging, I'm shooting, whatever it may be. You're making just, you know, slightly faster, knowing that that trail check that Robbie's shown, you know, a ton of ability to, to land is coming pretty quickly. Wilbur was trying to find Ostrowski, but it was knocked away. Ends up out of bounds and back the way of the Gales. Pretty impressive save from Newman down on the other side, denying Cooper, who's a big physical presence. Cooper was able to knife his way through, get a shot in close, but Newman stood tall. So we put Andrew on the spot earlier, Sean. Alice Clyde, number 10 for Mount St. Mary's. He, I'm sorry, for Mount St. Joe. He's headed to play at St. Mary's. Oh, so how are you going to yeah. avoid down on the river? How are you going to react? Well, obviously, uh, I'm afforded different yeah. a different okay, view different on set that. Of rules for you than for Andrew. I understand. It makes that. sense. Right. Makes a lot of sense. Totally get it. I'll tell you what. He's going to enjoy summer camp. <laughs> tell me about summer camp at St. Mary's. <laughs> Knocked away, not Robbie Hopper this time. Brock La Rochelle coming away with the CT and the GB. Numbers here. Move it back towards the middle. Kaufman decides not to force it. Come, I don't know. I don't know, Ruiz. I. It, it felt like they. It's took, senior day. I was about it's to say it's down. senior day. Senior day, step down. Grip it and rip it. <laughs> Other way. That shot not on target. Robbie Hopper with the backup. Oh, they gave it. Gave it to the Gales. 
Walton looking for his first goal of the game. Eight and a half remaining in the second quarter. No one has scored yet in quarter number two. Still a 6-1 game in favor of the Cavaliers. Corey Myers getting free. A bouncer that Newman st stayed with when it went wide. It was a good slide by Meehan. Yeah, I think, he, I think he got a piece of that shot when he slid. We can get a timeout here. Taken by the Cavaliers with 826 remaining. What do you think they didn't like there that and Coach Brian Phipps wanted to call a timeout? It's I couldn't tell you. We'll see when they come out. I mean, it could be personnel related. Um, I, I, we've seen the zone early, so I wouldn't be surprised if they want to talk through that and make sure that you know they have the right guys in the right positions. Um, but we'll see coming out of this timeout. I also think that was maybe a offensive timeout, I, even though they're on defense, kind of like, hey guys, you know, let's let's control the ball, right? Because you had a quick quick transition shot, step down, going back the other way. So it might be kind of, hey, defensive stand here. Let's slow it down on offense. Let's work our offense and get another. Another goal. It's actually exactly what I was wondering. Yeah, which was great minds think alike. It was look at us. Look at us. It all took just the entire season. Now we're really clicking. <laughs> now we're gelling. Just in time, and wow. I see each other. For, for now it feels like I'm the odd man out. I was, yeah, right. I was late on no. 97. <laughs> no, I guess, no offense, Andrew. I guess being um, here early and having general, notes. Is I, I just wonder if it's a enough. reminder. I know what you guys are saying about Ruiz. It's senior day. Go ahead, take your shot, right? But I just do wonder if he's calling a timeout and saying, "Hey, I get it." We're trying to have some fun, but we still want to win the lacrosse game, yeah. and we need to make good decisions in the process. Because I think if you let that slide, right, you start you start relaxing a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's when you get. That's when this turns into a six-five game, and everyone's starting to realize what happened. You know, fifty-six remaining on the possession clock for Mount St. Joe as they'll have it out of the timeout. Eight twenty-six to play in quarter number two. Glenn Clark, Sean Hatley, and that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. I'll cry about it tonight. <laughs> Won't do it on air. Sorry, you can call me. You, nice slide nice. there. Nato yeah. pays the price. Nice physical play by Jameson. Cavaliers going the other way. Hopper brings it up. Eludes the check. Gets the Cavaliers into their offense. Yep. And did not seem nearly as inclined to try to push the issue on that one, which I think maybe backs up what we think might have been said in that timeout. Looking for their first goal of the second quarter. Bennett swings it down to the near side. Couple of fakes. Guards are trying to get free. He's already got a pair on the day. Back to Bennett. Guards are from the near side. He's trying to get his hands free. Ends up swinging it on wide. Now defender hung up. Bennett, low to high, but it's saved. Nice stop. Austin Slade saw it the whole way. Bennett's had a couple of those from that angle, low to high, and goalies just gobbled it up. Gales slow it down after the quick clear. Yeah, Andrew, if you're Gordy Bennett, and you, you obviously like that little side over there, the goalie's right side stepping down, do you try to go low and away on that shot now that he's gobbled up your, your high shots you know, two times, three times in a row? Yeah, you definitely have to change it up. I mean, that's with him fading out right-handed, it's, it's a tough catch, you know, collect and then get back down towards the cage. Momentum is carrying you away from, you know, the goal. And you're also coming on a weird angle, right? You're catching across your body, and then you have to turn your hips entirely. So it's a different, difficult catch and finish, but he's doing it, right? So at this point, collect it and now change it up. Keep the stick high, bring it low. The goalie's following the ball as it, as it rotates around the cage, so he's turning naturally into that, that shot. So you got to keep him up high and bring it low. Cooper's shot off the pipe, and we're going to get another timeout here with 631 remaining in the second quarter. Taken and by Spalding. Mount St. Joe's getting some shots when they're driving from X, and but I think the, the issue is is that they're not taking that extra step or two to get a more of an angle right they're almost turning and shooting as soon as they're maybe a step above goal line and i think if if, the, if i'm st joe's coach i'm telling them guys take the extra one or two steps give yourself more of an angle and those those shots are going to start dropping because we've seen a couple of them you know that one went off the post yep. but a couple that's been gobbled up by newman and that does two things one it increases your angle gives you a better opportunity to score but it also makes you more of a threat and makes you draw, you know draw that slide which can then you know throw forward you know, above the cage, and then you got the defense on the run, which could free up somebody on the backside for, you know, an easy step down. But 
either way, you're, you're exactly right. They're, they're having these opportunities. They're just not capitalizing on them. Out of the timeout, it will still be Mount St. Joe ball. Gales trailing 6-1 with 6.31 to play in this second quarter. That presence of Cooper with his size, he is daunting, obviously. It's not like they don't have some size defensively, the Cavaliers. So plenty of time, 50 seconds on the possession clock. Walton swings it out wide. Now coming back to the near side, and that's Cooper. Cooper drawing Robbie Hopper. Myers gets in front, shoots low. Not on target, back up. Walton, and a flag comes out. Yeah, I think they had Nolan coming in high on the, on the slide there. Caught him up around the helmet. So first extra man opportunity of the day for the Gales. When I, I mean, when I was playing, I found those to be so difficult. When someone's coming at you full speed, and it's not like you can really get out of the way. It's almost sometimes you stand and stop, almost and then you still, yourself. yeah, and yeah. then the, you, you know they, they'll still throw the flag. So it's, it's just a, it's a tough, tough play. I think it's a tough play for the the official to make as well. I mean, I think he hears it before he sees it, right? I mean, you got a lot of contact in there, stick on stick, maybe shoulder on 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 stick, and so. It, you feel like you have to make that call because two people end up on the ground. Yep. So it's kind of unfortunate. 60-second penalty. That's the first shot of the man up for Addison. And inexplicably, there's no backup. Now, how does that happen? I think Logan beat it to the mid to the end line. It was a pure. <laughs> yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> I think, I think he actually effort. got there before the ball did. Especially on a man up situation. So still 26 seconds and need to be killed off on the penalty. Doesn't look like they're going to bother to extend, and Kaufman's going to go for a nice leisurely stroll. Well, as soon that as I say a, that. It was a nice over-the-head check by number 13. Yeah, fortunate that after Reese was able to get the ball out, they were able to get it back. Just a few more seconds to be killed off the penalty. And we are back to even strength here with five minutes to play in quarter number two. We've said this one too many times this season. Wow, they're comfortably in front, Spalding. Another bit of an offensive drought that we've seen here in the second quarter. Yeah, definitely. I think going back to that timeout, it, they kind of were playing into Mount St. Joe's hand, you know, with the transition plays and having to make a decision. Look at that look. <laughs> Wilbur right in wow. front, and Howard, who was trying to shoot it even before he had it in his stick because... The Canadian left hand. <laughs> he knew they were going to collapse. He was a little surprised he actually caught that ball and had as much time as he did. If he had, you know collected it and turned he would have realized he had a little bit more time than it was a great great feed by wilbur nice oh, oh there's wow. a behind the backer nice bobby look. Coleman. nice finish again don't know how necessary it was but oh when you score it who cares how yeah. necessary it especially was especially with how quickly that happened i don't even think he knew he was going behind the back until after it happened watch it one more time eh, i'll okay. give it to him yeah, yeah. you know what Crafty. I'm, I, I will take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Might not have been completely necessary, but I do think you improved an angle a little bit. First of the day for Komen, seventh of the season. Makes it 7-1 with 427 remaining in the second quarter. Quick faceoff win for Conley. That's the first we'll goal play on. either team has scored here in the second quarter. And that's what you want to see offensively. I mean, two great looks. I think you have Mollett and, and Wilbert. Um, on those looks there. One, Alec Howard, you know, again, not enough time to catch it and, and turn and have a, you know, clean shot, clean look at it. But, again, good look, found the open man. And there with Brady, you know, driving driving high, finding the guy on the inside, it's looking good. They're seeing the field well. Good defense by Ace Bruns. All over Cooper, surfer extraordinaire. Another senior who was honored before the game today. Clyde swings it to the middle. McDalton. Dalton lets it rip. Newman handles it. I'll tell you what, I've been really impressed with Will Cook, you know, converting to long pole this season, and he's really settled in and looks <laughs> looks natural out there with that pole in his hands. Cook, another one of this group of seniors. I was saying before the game, it's not a huge group, but certainly an impactful group of seniors yep. that were recognized today. 
Just over three minutes remaining in the quarter as the Cavaliers get it back. Leading 7-1. Gordy Bennett. It's like Mount St. Joe's in a zone here, trying to see if they can slow Spalding down. How do you want to see the Cavaliers attack this zone? Well, moving it to Pokeness in the middle is a good idea, but he's got to be able to catch it. The flag came out. It felt like it came out while the ball was loose. It's a slash. You know, Called against Copio. I mean, you, you saw Spalding recognize the zone and then get into their set, right? Because, I mean, Andrew, you know, they practice that. You know, what happens if, if we get thrown, if the zone gets thrown at us, right? Get yeah, definitely. Set. I mean, they saw it against Severn. They've seen it against, uh, I think, Gilman dropped into it. So teams throughout the season have, have gone in and out of that zone. I'll say they've played, seen more man-to-man -man defense throughout the season, but that's a great shot. Step down. Getting low. I'm about to talk to Jack about that fist pump. You didn't think there was enough there? It's you wanted more. That, yeah, was, right? that was like a wacky inflatable arm flowing <laughs> tube, man. <laughs> Maybe he's selling used cars here. It is like, like dropping yeah. G's. But, but is that an 8 1 fist pump? Is that the. Look, we're up by seven goals. I don't want to over celebrate well, this. Jack's got the quiet confidence, right? He's okay. never, never going to be the guy that's just going to go absolutely bonkers. So you got to give it to him. He's just. He's, he lets his game speak for itself. Second of the game for Jack Newell. 22nd of the season. 8-1 Cavaliers. Great ground ball there. Hopper comes in. Rare face-off win for Spalding here in the first half. Comfortably in front. Two and a half remaining in the second quarter. Getting back into the zone here. Let's see if they can capitalize again. I mean, the zone is essentially, the, you know, it's the same look as their man up. Right, so look for them to just kind of get in this triangle rotation and find Pokeness kind of creeping when the ball's on the opposite side, cutting in the middle, and they call it the wall. So they just, he settles down right in the middle of that defense, let them rotate around him and feed it inside. Nice look there. In front, but not able to put it home. Howard, a couple times Howard's been in front today that hasn't been able to get on the board. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not three for three today on the extra man, correct? I can't answer that. All right. Well, I'm I can't answer that. I'm glad I, I laid it out Sounds there. right. Sounds about right. I mean, you definitely thought about it, though. Nice. I did. I, gave, I, I went back. <laughs> Just going back. <laughs> Couldn't find it. <laughs> Mental replay. A minute and we a half remaining. Hungry, hungry hopper on the ball. And we're going to get a final timeout. No? Too many men on the field, maybe? I think it had something to do with the substitution game over there by the box. is quiet. So about a six, seven second difference, six second difference between shot clock and game clock. Tell you what, run in the box. That's a thankless job. You either get yelled at or nothing. Right. There's never a There's hey, good, good job yeah. running the box nope. today. No, it's, you were you the real doing? MVP. Right. Sean, is there anything you want to talk about today? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I haven't already covered with my therapist. We could look inside to Pokeness there. Not able to catch it, but I it's I think held he was thinking him. about a celebration before he, he caught <laughs> it there. Howard there to bail him out. 34 seconds on the possession yeah, clock. Yeah, you can hear Coach Ford yelling, move it. <laughs> Howard gets in. Okay, they're going to wave wow. it off and say crease, but it will still be spalling ball with the penalty. I think we could hear that slash from up here. Yeah, it came down right on top of his helmet there. Yep. It didn't count, but it was sort of funny. I don't know that Howard shot that ball as much as it just sort of came out of his stick into the goal. It's a changeup. Right. So, one minute penalty. How do you handle this? Do you hold on to it and start the third with the ball? What do you what do you do in this situation? I think you run run a quick play here if you get it great. You know, go back to the face-off dot. But the way that they've been playing, it'd be nice to come into that second half, you know, not having to go against Mount St. Joe. They've, they've proven that they can win the face-off in the ground ball battle. Um, so with 60 seconds on the shot clock, you know, the decision's on, on this side of the field. So they want to cherish the ball, take care of it, either put it back in net or go into halftime with possession. Right now, they appear content to throw it around, maybe seeing if there's a slide issue. 
and get something. Now they're holding easy. it. Yeah. You hear the coaches yelling from the sideline. They wanted to see if they could get get their look. Wasn't there, so they'll be happy to start the third quarter with possession. It has been all Cavaliers in this first half. They hit the break in front 8-1. You're watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these halls will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field, where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You will become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, 
guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. Become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They're challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and that transitions directly onto the field. That consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity. I need you to just lean. Yeah, like, okay, that'll. Just like. 
Getting ready for the start of the second half here at Whittles Field. Spalding in front of Mount St. Joe, 8-1. Glenn Clark, Andrew Scally, Sean Hatley, and a murderous son with you this <laughs> afternoon. Glenn's bitter. Senior day. Not at all. I totally don't mind the fact that the son is trying to kill me currently in this Glenn booth. looks like he's in a sauna right now. So I don't know what else there is to say other than do, uh, you know, 24 minutes of that, right? That's the idea as you start the second half. You call that play. Do it again. Just go do the same thing and enjoy a senior day victory, correct? <laughs> well, yeah. did, go ahead, Sean. I was going to say, it's just another opportunity to build for next year, right? You know, this is essentially the end of the season, right? These guys are enjoying their last game, but you still want to continue. 24 well, seconds on the penalty. Sorry, there was a little something that in my ended headphones. the first half. So Spalding starts the ball, no face off. As they switch sides here in this third quarter. They've been outstanding on the extra man so far today. We'll look to continue that. That shot was impacted and made it for a much easier save for Austin Slade. Five more seconds to kill off the penalty. Kern takes it himself, handles that, gets the clear. I like how Kern stayed home when he made that save, right? Everyone else broke out. He was right there, found the space, gave him a good outlet. And Gale's going See, we can attack. show some love to the other team. Fair, fair. And that wasn't even the player that's headed to St. Mary's either, right? Yeah. It's remarkable. Look at you. Benevolent. I do want to talk here in a second. You, you talk about building off this season. Obviously, this is not... You don't want to see your season end in the regular season. You want to be playing on to the postseason. But I'll, I'll ask you both for different ideas. The areas where you're encouraged about what this team can do next year as that shot comes whizzing in, and we'll find out about the penalty as Myers was not on target. I'll begin, indeed, I'll begin with Andrew Scally. Offensively, what encourages you about this team as we move towards the 2024 season? Well, it's definitely been, you know, an emotional roller coaster for me watching this offense. You know, it, glimpses of greatness and then glimpses of, you know, that youthfulness, right? We talked about turnovers early in the broadcast. And really every broadcast, you know, this season, it, you've definitely seen a maturation process with these young guys on, on that side of the field. And, you know, for me, this is, the, this is the last game of the season. But these guys play all throughout the summer, into the fall, you know, multiple tournaments. So... I've seen a lot of progress and, and growth from these guys. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what they do all summer and then what they can then do into the fall to build for, for next season. But they played fast, and again, they showed a lot of glimpses of, of you know, greatness. They, they moved the ball well. They're playing fast. I think we saw a lot of trust be built. I think we saw guys that, you know, they got confident in, in one another and, that, you know, they, they, you know, shared the ball well and, it's also trusting in, in the coaches, right? So there's a trusting of the process and, and what the coaches are putting into play, but that takes time to develop. Uh, when you look at a team like last year, those guys played club ball together. Then they played four years of high school together. And every single time they, they stepped on the field, they were building that trust. This is a fresh group that didn't get a lot of playing time historically that now have to learn a new offense, you know, under Coach Ford and Coach Cottle, and then gel with each other to then put a good product out on the field. So we, we've seen that throughout the season. So I'm excited for that, um, you know, going into the summer and, and building for next year. Basically no angle there for Comans after they killed off the penalty. It was Meehan who brought the ground ball over after the penalty was killed off. Some trouble over on that far sideline. Copio somehow holding on to it, just tosses it up in the air, hoping for the best, and he works out for him and leads to a Gales goal. It's just a broken play. Walton finds it, picks it up on a tricky hop, gets inside and scores to make it 8-2. First of the day for Maddox Walton, their leading scorer. So that aside, Sean Hatley, I turn things over to you. They're going to lose Meehan. They're going to lose Philly. But they do bring back some fella named Hopper that I hear is decent. Talk me through your encouragement for the defense moving forward to next season. Well, I want to piggyback kind of on what Andrew was alluding to a little bit is, especially when you're young and you're playing at this level, there is absolutely a learning curve and kind of a, a, a mental speed bump, if you will, that you have to get over within yourself to know, okay, 
I can play at this level, right? And and we've done it, and we've done it this season. You've seen a lot of the young guys. Well, you know, we might see something oh. here. Slay all the way in. Oh, a goalie goal! <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's Charlie Wiseman. Uh, Glenn, correction. The most electric play in lacrosse is a goalie goal. I know I've been saying it's the pole goal, but I think we Stand can corrected. agree. Wow. Um, a new goalie in to start the second half, Wiseman. We saw Slade early in the game, and I wondered why he didn't keep going. Wiseman said, I'm taking my chances, and he gets a moment he'll never forget. Wow. Um, I mean, good for Wiseman, but... Yeah, not not ideal, of course. Yeah, it's not when, ideal. When you're a defenseman, that's one of those that uh, you're definitely going to get chewed out on the sidelines. 8-3... An electric moment. Even the Spalding fans here had to show a little love to Wiseman there. Yep, through the flag. Will Cook ran through that pick and extended his arms. I think so they might give him unnecessary roughness. Not a great start here for yeah, the this Cavaliers. Yeah, this has been a bad sequence. Turnovers, lost faceoffs, penalties, you know, goalie goal there in the middle. And we talked about it earlier. Yeah, I'm I mean, starting to wonder when the boils and the frogs are going to come out at some <laughs> point, man. You're not kidding. Yeah. But we talked about it earlier. I mean, it was, it was a, I think it was a five-goal game earlier. And we talked about, you know, Spalding kind of getting outside of those, you know, those guardrails and doing things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, outside of the system that they've been right. working on all season. Um, and now you have another goal right there by the Gales. I mean, momentum is clearly on their side right now. An impressive rip for Aiden Addison, the future Towson Tiger. The senior gets his first goal of the day, and it's a 3-0 run to start the second half for Mount St. Joe. They are working their way back into this game at 8-4. And you'll see Robbie kind of kind of committed to the, the slide but didn't fully commit, and Addison did a great job of rolling off rolling away from the slide, turning inside, and letting one fly. So flag picked up because of the goal. Stay Which even strength. surprises me. Is that not a personal foul running through the pick like that? Was that the call? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I would have thought they would have called him for unnecessary roughness. I, I thought and that was up high unnecessary roughness as well. Mm. I guess it came over the restraining line, and now the officials are talking about it. it sound like they were saying Comins was over the line, but now prolonged conversation. And let's see. This seemed like a genuine dispute between the two teams, and ultimately the decision's going to go the other way. It's going to be Spalding ball. A lot of commotion there, fans. Spalding, Mount St. Joe, players. Ultimately, Cavaliers ball is what matters. Nope, and they're in that zone again. Let's see how, how they respond. I mean, they got to stop the bleeding. I mean, it's been a, this has been all Mount St. Joe all quarter. Yeah, the first time today where it's really felt like this is a significant possession for the Cavaliers. Momentum very much on the side of Mount St. Joe to open up the second half. And we've seen the Cavaliers unfortunately blow a couple of big leads this season and Glenn I, th I think you illustrated a point is this is the first time it seemed like it was a significant possession Spalding needs to be treating every possession mm. right as mm. though it's significant and this is what happens when <laughs> when you don't right? right you let them sneak back into the game and you know as opposed to a, oh it's good nice answer shot. right there <laughs> really impressive Garza with a rip and he is that near side high too that's a nice looking goal for Garza, this game is his recital. He thinks it's very vital to rock a rhyme. That's right on time. Hat Tricky is his title. Wow. Third of the day. I wish we had some music to play after. It's like even like a 10-second clip after you say that. We will have that ready to go for yeah. next game. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's well, going to be on the way. Yeah, we'll have correct. the whole offseason to nine get it there. 9-4 as Diego Garza gets his third. He's the 18th of the season. You know, Glenn, that was a new one. You brought out of the old bag of tricks and continued to impress. But, you know, one I haven't heard recently, mm. the Mamba. Oh, well, you haven't. We'll call it out. We'll, yes. get, it, we'll get it going. I, I'm going to need you to point I'll, out I'll to me up when for they you. run. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we could just do that, too. I'm all right with it. <laughs> I don't even know the words. Nobody does. 
I don't think Lou Bega knows the words. <laughs> Gale's ball after Spalding stops the run. 9-4. Boy, a kind of an unexpected shot. Sharp going down to get it from Newman because he was screened and Addison decided to let it rip low. Yeah, it's a great save. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that shot there for the, for the Gales. I mean, like you said, it, he spun around the defender, kind of had a screen set up. He, he changed his plane. And the element but of surprise. I element think. of surprise, exactly. Well, you, you know, they said, fool me twice. Shame on me, right? Mm -hmm. Addison has taken it like he's going to go left-handed. Do you have a but he has it. impression that you can bring it up? Oh, oh, man, I wish, fool, I, was, I, wish I was good at that. <laughs> fool me once. Uh, <laughs> fool me once. Shame on you. No, that was more shame, of an Elvis. Shame on you. Uh, <laughs> fool me twice. <laughs> well, we won't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to make a point, Glenn, of Addison is he's driving left-handed. Right, and I haven't seen yet, and maybe I missed it, but he hasn't really taken one running left hand down the side. He likes that turn back. So if I'm... Komen's oh, open. Nice shot. Low to high. Komen's second of the day makes it 10-4. But if I'm Coach Hockle, I'm, when my defensive middies come off the field, I'm telling him, listen, he wants to turn back right. right. So it's okay to trail him by half a step. Make him prove that he can shoot on the run left-handed and score. But if not, let him trail him by a half a step so when he goes to turn back, you're already there. You can get in his hip, and you can drive him out. Nice vision from Mollett, too, on the find. Gets the assist on that goal from Comins. And great response in general from the Cavaliers after the Gales worked their way back in to make it a four-goal game. Back-to-back -back goals. Hopper comes up with that. The hungry, hungry Hopper. Picking up those ground balls. I did try out a new one uh, when you weren't here last game. I tried out one, two, hoppers coming for you. Ooh, I like that. I like that one. Omo, Omo coming. Yeah, that's own. Oh, how do we make that work? Yeah. The syllables don't work out. I don't know. I thought my Hungry Hungry Hippos reference I don't, was pretty I don't good. I don't, just, I don't dislike you. You didn't give me any love. I think for ground balls, we continue to work with Hungry Hungry Hopper. Yeah. And yeah, then I for cause turnovers, especially when he gets a hanging stick. Hoppa coming. How about that? I do kind of <laughs> like that. I do kind of <laughs> like it. Got a couple more years to have fun with it. We just need to work on the whistle to go with it. For everyone listening at home, that's a wire reference? Correct. And we, until we find out we're not allowed to reference the wire, in which case we will move right back. Although if I'm between Freddy Krueger and the wire, I'm not sure. Which one is more family friendly? Into the oh, middle, Blokeness. Good finish, PJ. Goal by number seven. Second Blokeness. of the day for the senior on senior day, and three Blokeness. unanswered Blokeness. goals for the Cavaliers after the quarter began with three for the Gales. It's 11 4 with 424 remaining in the third. Yeah, that's a great look there by Aiden, and an even better handle and finish. You know, at that time, and we've seen a couple looks inside where. You know, Spalding's kind of rushed the shot right there. Pokeness caught it, collected it, little face dodge, moved the goalie and put it in the back of the net. So great look, great finish. Based off violation, I believe that's the first of the second half. Also, you saw P.J. kind of take a chance to collect himself, right? He didn't yep. just let that first one fly. Took, took a second and was able to put it home. So the Gales, who just a minute ago felt like they were back in this game, now again trailing by seven. And I imagine that's a pretty deflated feeling. Just right when you think you've done the work, flip the tide, momentum's on your side. All of a sudden you look up and you're down a touchdown. You know, I, I like the fact that Ace Bruns is getting, he's, he's getting some runs as, def as a defensive midi. And against and a really physical yeah. player, too. Well, because... After this year, you're losing, you know, Jameson Kaufman and Ben, and they're they've been taking the lion's share of those defensive midi reps. So, you know, being able to have someone, one or two guys that can step into that role is going to be really important. You know, speaking of looking to the future for the defense. Sure. Of course, Brun's also a senior. Oh, geez, yeah, I thought so, Brace Aces. You know, other well, than that, that's it on was me. Dynamite Sorry, Ace. analysis. Dynamite. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do with that exactly. No, you know what, but you did the right thing. It was important. I felt yeah, yeah, you did the right I thing. I didn't want to pull your pants down there, but that's all right. Time, reminder, time flies. A reminder, like my dad used to remind me, wear your belt. This time is why flies. why we wear belts. Newell 
Sends it back. Well, now my comment's even more important. Correct. <laughs> it is important to have someone. Just, you know, someone else. Noel to Bennett. Bennett again. Working against this zone from Mount St. Joe. Sharp ball movement. Then it back down to Newell, under 20 on the possession clock. Newell decides to let it rip. Nice save. Yeah, probably not the shot you want. I mean, but with 14 seconds left on the shot clock, you had to start making a move there. They just weren't seeing that. They called the wall, that inside man, and P.J. Pokeness, you know, showing to the ball carrier there. But careless turnover there by the Gales, so they'll get another shot at it. Yeah, unforced errors. Curry couldn't come up with it. Curry, a freshman. Save for Wiseman had the electric goal earlier in the quarter. Just over two minutes remaining here in the third. Mount St. Joe committing to that zone. They are, and I kind of got to tip your cap to them. They kind of got picked apart earlier in the game, and then they settled in. You know, some of that was unforced, you know, by Spalding just being careless with the ball, but... They've gone back to the zone time and time again, and now they're giving up, you know, shots like that that the goalie's seen the entire way. Yeah, Twelve and, yards out, you know, it, it's paying off. But is that settling? Is that I, what that I think? Is? I think it's fifty-fifty. I think that you know the Gales are, are settling in their zone. And they're playing, you know, cohesively as a unit. And then you also have Spalding kind of forcing the issue a little bit, and you know when they don't have to. At, at, that's another shot from distance. At, I think Sean said twelve, you know, twelve plus yards out with the decent amount of time on the shot clock. You, you don't want to sell it. Mount Joe is begging you to. To shoot that ball. Oh. That's exactly what they're doing by going into a zone. Whew. If that was saved, that's a miracle. And they couldn't save it both times. Fanton Otto did an unbelievable job of keeping that in the first time, but Myers couldn't protect possession for the Gales. He's walking a wire. Cavaliers get it back. And shot clock not a factor now. As we go under one minute to play in the third. Mount St. Joe opened this quarter with three straight goals, cut it to 8-4. Had a lot of momentum, but Spalding has responded. Stretched the lead back out to seven, matching their largest of the game. And during that uh, stretch, of that, I think they were winning face-offs, right? So Gordon at the X, you know, they would score and play make it, take it. I mean, that's huge because it can very easily go the other way. You score, give up the face-off, and then, you know, you go punch for punch. There's a good goal by Alec Howard. Alec Howard gets his first of the day. 30.3 seconds remaining in the third. It's 12-4. Watch it one more time. It's a nice sidearm whip. It's very difficult for me to see anything on this screen because every time I look to my right, I am blinded by handsomeness and the Correct, sun. exactly. I see Andrew Scally's face and I just say, how am I supposed to look at this screen? <laughs> it's two suns. Under 30 seconds remaining. Tell you what, if you're feeling bad about yourself, get up here in this booth, get a headset, sit next to these two gentlemen. <laughs> Believe walking tall. <laughs> Reminds me of those closing seconds of the first quarter. Not a lot of push, and they're going to throw it. Well, it won't be thrown away, but with three seconds left, just the only thing you can do. So I'm not. Mount St. Joe yelling, count them. They actually had seven of their own players on the field. So Okay, there you go. So that was the issue, was the offsides. And that's how the quarter comes to a close. We've got one quarter to go. Spalding's in front, 12-4. You're watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure. Creativity, endurance, guidance, and
And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. One more quarter to go here at Whittles Field. Spalding in front of Mount St. Joe, 12-4. Finale for us. Glenn Clark, Sean Hatley, Andrew Scally. Boys, has been quite the experience. I feel like I've learned a lot in how to carry a couple of guys on a broadcast all season long. That was a lesson you're, you're I needed. You're the professional, Glenn. That was a lesson like, I We've needed. learned a lot from you. You should have seen Andrew and I fumbling over ourselves when you weren't here. I have greatly enjoyed working with you boys this season. No, it's been a pleasure, Glenn. And, we have, yeah, we have learned a lot. And, on and through all the ups and downs of what has been a, a tricky season, I've enjoyed getting to see this young team. And we're going to see a new goalie here in the fourth for Archbishop Spalding. As Blake Connor, the freshman, will see his sixth game action of the season as he comes out to start the fourth. So, Sean, I, you were busy praising Andrew for his outstanding setup, but you never actually answered the question about what gives you the most encouragement about this defense going towards Well, I next tried year. to answer it, and it was... It yeah, was interrupted, interrupted by, a by a goalie goal. goal. Yeah, that's you know? correct. Quite I mean, geez, something I haven't seen in ages, and you know, that that's, that's what interrupts me. Charlie Wiseman, what was he thinking? Didn't know? Didn't he know we had things we needed to handle up here on this broadcast? <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> no, I, th I think the, the most encouraging thing that I've seen from this group is their physicality, right? They are coachable, right? So they're listening to Coach Hockle, who has a wealth of knowledge and experience. Um, and oh, and we got Jameson going again. Hoffman Am I about to be ahead. interrupted Move. again Good by another goal? Oh, oh, is that a save or was that a oh, that was pipe. pipe? I thought so. As Jason Stone gets some run, we see a few new faces out there here in the fourth. Toby Lees is out there defensively. Sean, why don't you go ahead and email us your response? Yeah, right, yeah. Question. we'll get to it next year. Oh, on the run, shot, Diego Garza. Garza. Adds a fourth on his day. I'll write you a letter, no more than four pages. <laughs> Please. Nineteenth of the season for Diego Garza makes it thirteen to four. All right, tell us. Single space times New Roman. Just answer the question already. <laughs> no, I, I what, what I think is that they've played so well and they're a young group, right? I mean, you have Logan Meehan as kind of the senior anchor, but you have some some sophomores out there that are that have been seeing some playing time, and I think that's just going to carry forward, right? Because they're going to have. Will be, by the time they're seniors, right, they're going to have three years of experience playing at the highest level in the country. So I think they're coachable. We've seen them play smart, play physical. I mean, I'm really excited. Uh, I think this defense is going to continue to be really good um, over the next few years. Yeah, I think that's. there's always a tough question, you know, having a freshman. I'm, I'm thinking of a guy like Brady Mollett, right, freshman being on, on varsity in the toughest conference in the country. The argument can be made, you know, that the, you're thrown to the wolves too soon, right? And they get beat on, and, and it's a, you know it's a it's a long season, and you know if it doesn't go your way, you know you can you have the possibility of you know messing with them psychologically. But I've always been in the camp that, you know, that experience is is invaluable, right? I mean, yep. he might he'll go into sophomore year with the experience and the comfortability and, and the understanding that he belongs there. Yep. He can handle the pressure, you know, he can step up and make plays. And then the pace of the game just, you know, inevitably just slows down for him and helps him to see the field better and elevate everybody else around him, whether they're a freshman that's coming up behind him that have the chance to play varsity or even some of these, you know, sophomores, uh, juniors, and, and seniors that might not have gotten playing time. But, you know, he's, he's that presence out there that has the confidence. So I'm excited for it. He's definitely not as developed as some other players we've seen in this league, but he's never looked like... It was overwhelming. Stone's going to get on the board. Jason Stone, just his second goal of the season, makes it 14-4. Playing at this level early, you get those, you, you quiet those doubts. Because coming in as a young player, playing at this level, you're, it's constantly in the back of your head, whether you admit it or not, is can I do this? Yeah, do right? I belong can, here? Yeah, do I belong here? Can I do this? And as you get more games under your belt, those voices start to get quieter and quieter until the point, hey, this is my field, right? I'm, I'm meant to be here. Do you belong here? 
Well, and I belong everywhere at all times. We belong together, <laughs> as Mariah Carey once said. <laughs> Walton comes away with it from Mount St. Joe. Spins free. Flag comes out. It's going to go against Meehan. Glenn, I could do 100 more broadcasts with you. I will still never be able to put my finger on what genre of music you listen to. Mm. That is, oh, we've, that we've is actually the answer, a great indeed. point. We have had John Mayer. Yeah. We have had Mariah Carey. We've yeah. had... Romstein. Yeah, a lot Romstein. Of, I mean, it, it's... It's A to Z. Run DMC regularly, yeah. I think Little. we need to make a Glenn Clark Spotify playlist Ooh. for all the listeners at home. Can, I don't can, know if it will keep me up at night or put me to sleep or, <laughs> yeah. you know, it I listen to going sleep, around the town. And then an hour later, jarring I, I don't wake know. you up. I don't know. <laughs> it's like weird. Why has my sleep suddenly gotten terrible? I feel like this is your way of saying that I might be a psychopath. I, I feel like I didn't this say is it. your quiet I did not say it. Saying, I didn't say it. We're concerned. Well, there are people at home jumping up and down on their couch saying, absolutely. <laughs> Me and will serve Finally, a Mariah Carey penalty. shout out. I've been waiting all <laughs> right. season for all this. Season. <laughs> Man up opportunity for the Gales. Looking for their first man up goal oh, of the day, and they won't get it because by that is just cleanly intercepted by Ruiz. Pushes it ahead. Kaufman lines it up. It. Jameson Kaufman. J Jameson stood and stared at it for a second like he thought it went on the outside of the cage. And he was like, oh, it's definitely a goal, oh, right? I got it, right? And you see him eating the corn off the cob there. It's corn. It has the juice, and he has the juice. Sure does, and that, he's kind of an unlikely benefactor of that pickoff. You know, typically you don't have a defensive midi leading the point on a fast break. Obviously, Spalding setting up for the release of the penalty to get him back on the defensive side, but, you know, right time, right place. Capitalized. Man down goal for Kaufman. His first of the day, his seventh of the season. Now, there's still 35 seconds on the penalty, taking it all the way in. I nice save. Newman comes up with that. As Garrett Conley was trying to give the Mount St. Mary's fans, like Andrew Scally, reason for encouragement, Philly will just toss that over the sideline because there is another flag out. Maybe and they this, got Robbie for a slash, maybe? Yeah, this presents some real trouble for the Cavaliers. So, I mean, Robbie missed a couple of those over the heads, but one thing that I've seen this entire season from him is the patience, and I think we might have talked about it early in the season, but the patience to wait for them to bring that stick back to shoot yep. he knows they have to they have to bring it back and and he's been very good at just you see him kind of hover wait the for him it's back yep. there Leave and it's dangling. so many people get eager right but to have that patience is is probably what leads to has been leading to his his uh, turnover count six on four for 19 seconds then it'll be good a check, check by la rochelle unbelievable two men down and La Rochelle comes away with it. Cavaliers will kill off the first penalty. So they're back to just man down. And the question will become, can Kaufman and company run that out? Considering they've already scored one man down goal, they might not just be inclined to run it down as much as they might be inclined to take a chance, go try to score another. So down to 20 seconds on the penalty. No hurry to do anything, nor should they be. It's just, it's tough because Spalding was just a few goals away in a couple of games from this being a completely different season, right? Yep. A couple and of tough one goal yeah, losses. Yeah, it's just, you know, but you got to just focus on, focus on moving forward. Can't, can't dwell on it too long. Yeah, you know, honestly, I think that's the message for the coaching staff going into the, the offseason here is, you know, a couple bounces our way. This season looks a lot different, and we did it how? With a lot of young guys, you know, with the, one of the toughest schedules in the country. Some injuries. There's a lot, to, a, a lot to be proud of and, and also a lot to look forward to. Pokeness pushes it. He wasn't able to wind up on that. He had to generate the power with just five. Is that five, PJ? No, it's his third of the game. That's his third. But close. They're both numbers. Oh, well, we didn't get the uh, 
Hat Tricky song. Well, I do it the first so time. I, I know. Guess. I know you guys haven't really paid attention much this season, but the first guy that gets the hat trick gets oh. one of the MC, and then everybody else just gets to join the hat trick party. It's okay. Again, we will iron all the, the things out, and by the time we get to July, we will be rolling. We will be clicking at that oh, point. Welcome to the hat trick party. Right. I'm your host, Glenn Clark. It's like a New Year's party. <laughs> yeah. Dick Clark's <laughs> yeah. rocking hat trick party. Glenn Clark's Eve. rocking hat trick party. <laughs> Third of the day for P.J. Pokenis makes it 16-4. I think I'll be sick for that party. Oh, you're not going to make it? No, That's I'm not going to make shame. it. That's a real shame. Sorry. I don't I know who Glenn has performing at that party. Uh, Pitbull? <laughs> but I'm on eggshells waiting. Pit, Pitbull. Pitbull. Okay. And Mr. Uh, National. Billy Eilish. And, and Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is too much fun, guys. I'm going to miss this. Midway point of the fourth quarter as Mount St. Joe gets it. Speaking of having fun, the Cavaliers have been having fun today. Senior day to celebrate. Oh, wow, Cooper great take there. Oh, wow. That's impressive from Cooper. His first of the game. Cuts it to 16-5 with 5.52 remaining in the fourth. And who's coming off? Yeah, just got a step. Jameson just tried to go a little too high there. I felt like the crowd was recognizing someone who was coming off, but I couldn't see. I think it might be it might be celebrating Cameron Wade getting into the game there. Ah, there we go. So we see Sawyer Grant race off the field. And we're gonna get a timeout here with 5:52 remaining. Like pulling the face off. Is that Will Will Cook taking a face off? We seen him take a couple. No, actually, you know he hasn't taken many. Hooper took a couple. When they've gone to a poll on the face Who's off Hooper? this season. Hooper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, well, only the guy we've talked about right, all, all season, season long. long. Ruby all Hooper. All season <laughs> Great long poll. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby I feel like big things are coming. 16-5. Spalding in front of Mount St. Joe. 552 remaining in the quarter number four. Is they're sending the seniors out in style today. As they look ahead to 2024, and again, we said it all throughout the course of the season. We said it beginning of the year, Sean. We said it the first game we did. We knew that this was going to be a difficult season for a young team and that the expectations were not quite the same. Obviously, still with that, they wanted to make the postseason. They, you know, they wanted to win a yeah. few more games, but we knew what the story was going to be. The question was, would they be building towards championship teams in the next year or two and I do think it's fair to say we've seen signs of what the foundation can be for future championship teams. Absolutely I mean the, the, the foundation looks solid and it's it's really tough when you've had the success that Spalding has had the last two years to look at the season and, go, and, and be dejected but you, you can't right you're you not every championship team carries on a dynasty I mean unless you're the Bulls right with Michael Jordan you're not going to carry on a dynasty for that long right? right so you need to you need to just accept where you are you continue to trust the process and your players I mean they have good players they have good players coming in they have good players on the field now I mean th this program is going to be a top contender for years but you know they're they're having a year where they're building and getting guys experience running shot not on target from walton another thing to look forward to i mean just a shout out to coach alex kessler of the jv team here at spaulding undefeated on the season mm -hmm. hosting the semifinals on on thursday he's done a great job with that team and guess where he went to college mm -hmm. not st mary's same place where garrett conley's going to play but, yeah, I mean, I, I actually had a chance to talk to him before the game, and, you know, he just speaks so highly of, of the guys that he has down on, on the JV team and, you know, what they're going to be able to bring to the table. You know, he's fairly confident a lot of those freshmen will, will make an impact on this team, you know, on the varsity team next year. So, again, super excited about the roster they have built right now, but they're only adding to it, you know, to piggyback on what Lots Sean was saying earlier. And to, and to take it one step further, Andrew, too, while we're kind of praising everybody, the school has done a ph phenomenal job of having Coach Phipps, having everyone's back, supporting the, the program, looking after these guys, making sure they're prepared for the next level, whether they're playing lacrosse or not. I mean, the school has done a, a, a great job at kind of helping this program and, and the players within it um, get to that next level. Stone has it checked out of his stick, but look at the bat. Oh, he gets leveled. That's not a loose ball push. McCall and Clyde. 
Cavaliers hold on to it as we go to four minutes remaining here in this fourth quarter. And save made by Wiseman. I just want to clarify, you're not worried that they let us do this this year because they knew it might be a little bit of a down year, and the next year when they're ready to start winning again, they bring in the real broadcast. Well, I heard they right? were bringing in Al Michaels and Tony Romo oh, for next year. But I was afraid of that. Yeah. I hear those guys are good. But they're keeping Andrew on. <laughs> I mean, because he's that good looking. I know their coffee right? orders. <laughs> I, I, I'm a great coffee guy. Oh, with Good no move, angle at all. Nice move by Walton to get that home for a second of the game. I was afraid they might hire Quint for that. He seems to get all the jobs. <laughs> all of a sudden, I look up. Quint's on my TV again. 331 remaining. 16-6 now as Walton scores the second of the game, the senior. It's hard not to think about Mount St. Joe, you know, on the other side of the field here and, and, you know, the program that they've been trying to build for a while. Spalding and Mount St. Joe, they've been neck and neck for, I mean, I'd like to say decades, mm -hmm. right? They've yeah. always kind of been fighting for that, uh, you know, middle of the barrel type type spot in the MIAA. Wiseman makes the first save, but then there to clean up the trash, McInerney, who's had a Goal senior day to nine. remember. I mean, Andrew, you remember those McInerney. basketball rivalries. For sure. Spalding St. Joe when Rudy sure. Gay was here. Wilcox playing for St. Joe. I mean, that was, you couldn't get a ticket to get in the arena. But I think what it takes, I mean, Spalding has capitalized on, you know, the success they've had over the last, I'll say, handful of years, four or five years, and have, have you know, brought in more talent to, to backfill, you know, these graduating seniors. And we talked about all day today, you know, not graduating too many seniors and reloading that team. And filling it with you know even more JV players and, and additional freshmen coming in, they've done a great job. And, and you know, tip the cap to, to Coach Phipps and, and to your point, Sean, the school for being behind them and, and allowing that process to happen. You know, former alum, it's exciting to see, and I, I think it's something that they hadn't done historically. You know, you kind of sit back and rest on your laurels if you're having a good season and you don't backfill. They've done the opposite here, and it's you know it's proven a lot of people want to come play for Spalding for the record, for the organization, for the school, you know, and ultimately the success that they, they've, you know, had on the field. Um, so it's been exciting to watch. And, you know, as a fan, an alum, you know, and a commentator now. Flag comes out. Garrett Conley takes the face off all the way in and scores, something that Andrew Scally is hoping he does a lot more of over the course of the next four years when he is playing out in Emmitsburg. Their man up. Here late in the game. Well, Andrew, and, and to your point a little bit about the process, right? I mean, the coaches run this program like a college program, right? You know, the kids are watching film. You know, the practices are tough. They're upbeat. You know, and, and I think it's – you've seen it. It was a slow process when Brian got here, but it's fi he's finally gotten, you know, the program to the point where, you know, they're, they're going to be perennial powerhouses in the MIA. Yeah, I mean, the ultimate difference is he set the standard. Yep. Right, I think each year with new coaching staff, you know, when we were here, we had we had, you know, solidity at at that coaching staff level, and and it showed. I mean, we were successful. When we were here, but they've been here every single day. They show up. They're in the building. You know, Coach Hockle uh, and Coach Phipps are are in the, you know within the confines of the school, and they see the players throughout the day. And you're right, they're watching film. They spend a lot of time together, and and the chemistry clearly can be seen, you know, each day. Not always, right? We've talked about consistency being an issue with this team, but when they're on, they're on. And, um, and, and you, won't see, uh, you won't see many demerits for untucked shirts coming from the lacrosse players with Coach Phipps and Coach Hockle roaming the hallways. That is true. Owen Cooper with his second goal of the day to cut it to 17-8. to eight. I'm still working with the solidity. That might be my favorite. I'm not sure if it's real or not, but I just... It sounds pretty good. Correct. We, I'm willing to just take it. And I think say we submit that to... 100%. That is Britannica. a thing now. I'm with it. 17-8 in the closing minutes. Again, want to salute the seniors playing their final game. Cameron Wade, Ben Ruiz, Will Cook, Ace Bruns. Aiden McInerney, who's had a fun day today with a pair of goals and a couple of defensive stalwarts. Nolan Philly, who's headed down south to play at Mercer. And, of course, Logan Meehan will be sticking around the area and playing at Towson moving forward. Good group of seniors. 
and, accomplished and a lot of things. Just a good group of kids too. It just, I mean, you can't can't say that enough. They're just good people. T.J. Pokeness, of course, playing football as he moves forward for RPI. Wow, Jason Stone explodes through that. Second of the day for Stone. Make it 18 to eight. Man. As good is that, as PG is that two? Two for yep, two second for Stone? of the day for Stone. Yep. As good of a lacrosse player as PJ Pokeness is, as good of a finisher as he is. He's gonna be playing linebacker for RPI moving forward. Of course, a champion for the football team here at Spalding. And he's got the uh, honorary Andy Ezer number seven. It's one senior selected every year to wear that jersey. You want to remind everybody about that real quick? Yeah, Andy Ezer, the alumni, um, passed away in a tragic car accident uh, several years ago. And he was uh, embodied hard work um, and spirit for the school um, and has been missed. But they honor him by awarding, you know, one of the seniors to wear number seven every year to carry on his memory. Running shot wide for Ben Duffy. And just to add to that, I mean, that it's not given by the coaches. You know, yeah. that that's a uh, an honor that is awarded and voted upon by the team. Right? So the team looks around and says, hey, who, who, is, who exemplifies, you know, what Andy exemplified and, and ultimately what Spalding exemplifies. So um, huge honor for him. And he's played well all season and, more importantly than his play, he, he carries himself um, the way that anybody, you know, graduating from Swalding would, would want him. Just two-second difference here between shot clock and game clock. And, Glenn, one, one last thing, because I think, you know, parents see their kids when they go off to school and then when they come home at night. And I think it's important. Andrew and I have both had an opportunity to coach a lot of these guys. Yep. And seeing firsthand, they look you in the eye. It's yes, sir. It's no, sir. You know, they're not, not shrugging their shoulders, you know, rolling their eyes. Um, they're respectful, they're coachable, and, and they're just, they're good young men. So, you know, for all those parents out there that <laughs> might not see that side of their child, they are, they are good young men. We'd love to hear that, and we'd love to hear an 18-8 victory for Spalding on Senior Day. A senior day to remember for the Cavaliers as they end the 2023 campaign with an impressive win over Mount St. Joe. Spalding will finish the season 6-12, and 3-7 and seven in the conference. Mount St. Joe falls to 8-10, and 1-9 and nine in the A conference. Some final thoughts. I'll go to both of you boys. I'll start with Andrew. Some final thoughts for you on day on the season for the Cavaliers. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd first like to thank you, Glenn, all the tutelage throughout the season. First time in the booth. Really enjoyed myself. Every day um, when you came here, I said, figure it out, and you did. Yeah, tough, and tough that. love. I, I learned with that. That's good. That's good. But, no, as far as the team goes, I mean, I, I was happy with the entire season. It was a roller coaster, like I said earlier in the broadcast. Played with my emotions a little bit, but I think they left me on this last game with a lot of excitement and a lot to look forward to. And um, I, I know they're going to have summer leagues and tournaments this summer, I'm, so I'm excited for what the, you know, the future holds for this team. No doubt. Sean? I will say, Glenn, and I'll second him. I mean, you're the consummate gentleman and professional and uh, – you learned a ton about this, and it's not an easy job, and you make it look so easy. So I really appreciate you being patient with us and showing us, showing us the ropes. But, no, it's been great seeing this team develop over the season. It wasn't a great result to the season, but we saw a lot from that very first game yep. when we were freezing up here yep. all the way till now. We've seen an improvement. We've seen these guys get more comfortable, more confidence, and I'm really excited for, for what this team can do starting next season. They're going to hit the offseason hard, knowing the coaches. They're going to be living. In, they're going to be getting after it, and they're going to come into next season with a chip on their shoulder to show that they really are one of the top teams in the conference. Boys, it has been a pleasure. I have enjoyed it. I look forward to uh, more seasons of hanging out with you guys. I want to make sure we thank Paul Garza and his entire team for all of their hard work all season long. And thanks to each and every one of you for joining us all throughout the season and hanging out with us and putting up with uh, bad uh, dad jokes and musical puns and things <laughs> along those lines. 
for Sean Hadley, for Andrew Scally. I, Scally, easy for me to say. I talk for a living. <laughs> Just right at the end of the year, decided I would forget. It's scaly. We've had it wrong this whole time. words were. <laughs> Robbie Hooper. For the crew, I am Glenn Clark. And your final score here today, Archbishop Spalding 18, Mount St. Joe 8. You have been watching Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse.